Hello, everyone. Welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, we're in an episode of Book Snippets, and we're here with an interesting read. Stephen Hawking is considered the most brilliant theoretical physicist since Albert Einstein. He has captured the minds of millions of people worldwide with his work on cosmology, his fight against all odds after contracting amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which paralyzed him, and also for his literary work. The best example of his literary work is A Brief History of Time, published in 1988. Hawking wrote this book on theoretical cosmology for readers who had no prior knowledge of physics. He had managed to produce an accessible and enjoyable book, understood by laymen as well as scientists. Let's look at an overview of that book. In A Brief History of Time, Hawking himself acknowledges that when he approached Simon Mitton, the editor in charge of astronomy books at Cambridge University Press, he was warned that for every equation added to the book, readership levels of the book would decrease by half. After much tussle with the draft, Hawking consented to remove all equations except E equals MC squared. It must be noted that he included complex models, diagrams, and illustrations to detail some of his concepts. A Brief History of Time deals with various cosmological advances across the ages in 12 chapters. The first chapter talks about the picture of the universe throughout the ages. Hawking initially mentions the work of early Greek philosophers, such as Aristotle and Ptolemy, who proposed a geocentric universe. Renaissance astronomers such as Copernicus, Galileo, and Kepler disproved this by their work on orbits and gravitation, which then led to Newton's law of gravitation. Other works by Einstein and Hubble are mentioned before talking about a grand theory of everything. The next chapter analyzes space and time. Newton has dissolved the idea of absolute space put forth by Aristotle with his work on mechanics. However, he viewed time as absolute. Hawking then details James Maxwell's theories on light propagating as waves. Initial assumptions of a hypothetical aether was disproved by Michelson and Morley. Albert Einstein also disposed of the ether by dismantling absolute time in his special theory of relativity. He also says that mass and energy are related, hence the equation E equals mc squared, and describes gravity as an illusion of the space-time warp in his general theory of relativity. Hawking, together with Roger Penrose, found that using this theory, the universe can be considered as finite. The third chapter, The Expanding Universe, talks about Edwin Hubble's 1929 discovery of the receding of stars. His work was proved by measurements of red-shifted and blue-shifted galaxies. Then, Hawking discusses various theories on the origin of the universe, including the Big Bang Theory, which was deemed correct by Hawking's earlier work on general relativity with Roger Penrose. However, Hawking now says that quantum effects show a different origin of the universe. In the subsequent chapter, he focuses on Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, 
which laid the groundwork for quantum physics. Elementary particles like quarks and bosons are discussed in chapter 5. In here, Hawking discusses classification, behavior and properties of quarks, fermions, bosons and other subatomic particles. In Black Holes, that is chapter 6, Hawking recollects his lost bet to Kip S. Thorne on the existence of black holes before describing them as portions of space-time with extremely strong gravity formed after the destruction of large stars. S. Chandrasekhar's work on stars is referenced here along with detection of black holes via X-rays. In the next chapter, Hawking disproves older theories saying that black holes only gain mass. His work on Hawking radiation states that black holes lose energy when particles absorb them as per the second law of thermodynamics. As we read chapter 8, we find Hawking analyzing the Big Bang theory in detail. He also describes other possible scenarios for the same theory with often disastrous results like lesser expansion and a higher rate of expansion. In the end, he leans in favor towards an, et an eternally inflating multiverse with various universes having different laws of physics. Time, as experienced by humans, is directional according to Hawking. In Chapter 9, The Arrow of Time, he argues that humans observe time unidirectionally. In thermodynamics, time moves towards a state of more randomness. Psychologically, time moves from the past to the uncertain future and cosmologically, time is directed by the universe's expansion. This discussion leads to the futility of time travel and the existence of wormholes in Chapter 10, where Hawking dissects the reasons why such bridges in space-time do not facilitate faster-than-light travel as well as time travel. In Chapter 11, Hawking says that quantum physics and the general theory of relativity are both proved and disproved. Many scientists have now directed efforts to forming a universal theory of everything that can unify physics and make it easier to study. As we read the last chapter, Hawking acknowledges that a unification of physics has great effect on our understanding of existence as current science has become too technical in order for philosophers to consider it. Ultimate human reasoning would be made possible with the unification of physics. This book is a goldmine for cosmological information, which is also easy to read. Therefore, this book is a must-read for anybody with a taste for exploring the universe. It is quite short with only 12 chapters, but after reading this book, I can guarantee that you will have an improved understanding of the world around us. For hearing more comprehensive reviews of various books, don't forget to subscribe to our channel Brain Blitz Audios and to hit the red bell icon below the video. You can share your views on this book in the comments section down below. Until the next webisode, take care and stay safe. Bye-bye!